Dr. Neha. So the last speaker of this session is uh, Dr. Ashwini Kumar Bahera. He is from Netram Hospital, Ganjam, Odisha. He would be talking to us on cyclodestructive procedure. Uh, a fine good evening to one and all. Uh, my session's last topic and the last resort for any glaucoma surgeon is cyclodestructive procedure. There is no financial interest involved, and whatever little I know, I already give credit to my teachers at RP Center. So let's come to a few scenarios. An operated corneal perforation, no PLI with severe pain. Another case with NVG with a painful blind eye in the left eye, advanced cataract. Another patient with 6 by 60 vision, one night patient, myopic retinal detachment, operated PPV, answer class, FACO SOR done, failed trap, failed AGV, SLT also done, still IOP is not controlled. What options do you have for this 20, 30 years before? What options do you have now? And what we can do to provide best possible outcome to such patients? So this is by damaging the ciliary body, where the, it causes reduce in the aqueous humor production. So it started from the cyclectomy, goes to cyclocryotherapy, to the diode level cyclophotocoagulation, ultrasound also tried, and as Dr. Neha also speak, uh, spoke about micropulse. So whatever damage inflicted upon the neighboring trabecular meshwork is the sole cause of discovery of new modalities and innovation in this field. So starting with cyclocryotherapy, where at 1.5 mm from limbus, a form pressure and rapid freezing is done, where intracellular microcrystal is formed. And in case of transclear cycle photocoagulation, uh, there will be, uh, there will be uh, in case of ECP, uh, there will be direct application of titration energy in the ciliar epithelium, where the selective changes in the secretory epithelium and pigment loss is there, and micropulse mechanism like minimal core necrosis is there. In case of ultrasound, HIFU based on high intensity focus ultrasound also tried, where the piezoelectric transducer induces coagulant necrosis. So in case if you see the histopathology in transclerar CPC, there is full thickness destruction of the ciliary epithelium there. But in case of uh, uh, ECP, there is ciliary epithelium remained intact, continuous and uniform. So during these procedures, perioperatively is painful, so you need adequate anesthesia like perivalent block. Antiplatelets are not usually stopped before cyclodestructive procedures. Under general anesthesia for children also, we need perivalent block. And we need to counsel the patient very well. The two machines like Iridex have um, uh, micropulse and D, uh, DLC machine with G-probe, Quantel has Vitra 810 where subcyclo and thermocyclo can be done on the same machine. So marking the ciliary body, the outline with the dye for the better effect and proper localization of the ciliary body in the eye is necessary in such case scenarios. Form pressure along the marking and start with a lower energy of 12 milliwatt, 1200 milliwatt till a pop sound is heard. After pop sound, lower the energy of 50 milliwatt for adequate energy. So why we need a transillumination? Because if you see in this case, ciliary body is not 1.2 million, 1.5 million behind limbus, it is far away. So if you do a DLCP, it will not be much effective. So to marking that, so you need a transillumination. So it might be very costly for tri to have centers having transillumination. So this is innovation technique by Sandeep Saudri, where with the help of simple torch light, you can mark a ciliary body. So probe, probe must be perpendicular to the sclera, 10 degree off from the perpendicular leads to a 20 degree, 20% 20 or more energy variation, so the effect of DLCP will also vary. In case of anterior staphylomas like children, the parameter generally kept very low. So if you see in this case, there is, seems like a total sun glow, so but there is ciliary body is going to be visualized. And never do 360 degree DLCP, there is chances of thysis will be more. Supra conjunctiva should be available for surgery and prefer inferior 180 degree of DLCP in, in DLCP. There is something called slow coagulation or slow cook method of continuous web transclera CPC where 1250 milliwatt of energy for four seconds is given. It is proposed to minimize the collateral damage. The post of management, we give steroid antibiotic cover, cycloplegic to decrease inflammation and pain, tablet acetazolamide, pre-op anti medicine to be continued, analgesic, and follow-up to be done one day, one week, one month. Effect comes after one month. There are n number of complications. The fear while doing DLC in patients with good central vision or with advanced glaucoma are its unpredictable outcome, where our aim is not only reduce IOP, but also to preserve the vision. Sympathetic ophthalmia should also be remain, uh, kept in mind and must be, must counsel the patient. There is a review by Cochrane where the cyclodestructive procedure uh, is reviewed. They are considered articles before 2018 where Chen MFL found there is no study with, where compared any of cyclodestructive procedure versus any other glaucoma treatment. And there are four different comparisons they have done. ECP versus AMR implant. At 24 months, they found very low certainty evidence between these two groups. Between micropulse and continuous web CPC, they saw more complication in CPC group and result is both similar outcomes. 
And CPC using semiconductor versus NDR laser, they found both studies have reported hypotony as an ad adverse effect. And different energy setting of NDR get 8 joule and 4 joule, they find fibrin or hyphema and severe AC reactions in 8 joule are more, much more than the 4 joule group. So my, in conclusion, they reviewed, this review is inconclusive as to whether cyclodestructive procedures for refractory glaucoma results in better outcome and fewer complications than the other glaucoma treatment and whether one type of cyclodestructive procedure is better than the another. So let's consider a few scenarios, young boy, intracalary staphyloma, corneal opacity in visual prognosis, no pain, cosmetically not appealing. So I would prefer to do an inferior 180 DLCP, sparing the staphylomatous part. In case of pseudophagic eye, pseudophagic glaucoma, no complaint of pain, vision poor, very high IOP, supraconjunctus carrying, patient does not complain of pain, don't do any intervention. Operated corneal perforation, no PL, severe pain eye as seen in this picture, prefer to do a 270 degree DLCP, leave 190 uh, degree for uh, functioning uh, ciliary body. Uncontrolled diabetic, NVG, I will prefer to do ARC cyclocryotherapy where there is need of uh, anterior segment uh, ischemia, so I have to do ARC cyclocryotherapy, then uh, DLCP. And this is one case where one-eyed patient, vision 6 by 60, such complications, uh, failed trap, AGV, SLD done. I will still prefer a micropulse subliminal laser in such scenarios. So take home messages, frequency and range of indications varies greatly between resource, surgeon preference, patient profile and cost of procedure. There is currently insufficient high quality control evidence to evaluate the relative safety, effectiveness of cyclodestructive technique for the management of non refractive glaucoma. Existing evidence has not yet adequately defined the role and value of value, but newer procedures and their emergence is a welcome step. So before considering for any cyclodestructive procedure, just take a pause and think again. These are my teachers, my gurus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any 